In object-oriented programming languages like Python, much of your code will use objects. This video will show you the basics of how to use objects in Python. First we'll see the three key concepts, then how to apply those concepts in Python. The first of the three key ideas is that every object belongs to a class, that is, every object has a type. For example, the object 15 belongs to the int or integer class, the object hello belongs to the string class, and the object rg.simpleTurtle belongs to the simple turtle class as defined in the Rose Graphics module. The second key idea is that for any given class, there can be many objects that have that class as their type. For example, we might have two simple turtle objects, one of which has a blue thick pen while the other has a red thin pen. Similarly, we might have two point objects, one with xy coordinates of 250, 100, and the other with xy coordinates of 125, 300. As these examples show, objects know things. That is, every object has data associated with it. For example, a simple turtle knows its pen, while a point knows its x and y coordinates. And while every point has data associated with it, called x and y, one point can have one value, for example 250, as the value of its x, while another point can have a different value, for example 125, as its x. We call the names of the data items associated with an object its instance variables. The third key idea is that objects can do things, and that all instances of a class have the same set of things that they can do. So for example, every simple turtle object can go forward, backward, right, left, lift the pen up, and so forth. Similarly, every point object can, can perform a move by to change its x and y coordinates by specified amounts. We call the things that an object can do methods. To repeat, here are the three key concepts. First, every object belongs to a class. We say that the object is an instance of the class. Second, for any given class, there can be many instances of that class, and each instance has data associated with it, stored in what's called its instance variables. All instances have the same names for their data, for example, all points have an x and y associated with them, but the actual values for those names will vary from one instance to another. Third, all instances of a class have the same set of methods that define what the instances can do. Now let's see how those concepts are used in Python. Let's start with an example. Suppose that you want to draw a red circle on a window. Let's work through the code needed to do that. First of all, to access the graphic systems that we are using, you need to import it via the statement import rows graphics as RG. This causes the computer to examine the rows graphics module, that is file, and store all the definitions in that file. Thereafter, we can refer to those definitions by using RG as an abbreviation for rows graphics, followed by a period, often called a dot, like this, RG dot. In Eclipse, doing so pops up all the things that are defined in the rows graphics module. Here we see that there are a number of things marked with a C, which stands for class. For example, we see that rows graphics includes definitions for a circle class, a color class, a rectangle, a simple turtle, and more. Here the word class means a type of thing. So there are things that are objects, other things that are rectangles, other things that are simple turtles, and so forth. Let's work with the point class first. To construct an instance of the point class, that is, to construct a particular point object, we use the notation RG followed by a dot, followed by the name of the class, here point, followed by parentheses, like this. This calls a special method in the point class. Now that method initializes the point that we are constructing. In general, a class's constructor function needs some information in order to initialize the object being constructed. That is, the constructor function needs arguments. But how do you find out what arguments are needed? Eclipse can help us. If you click between the parentheses and press Control Space, Eclipse will automatically type in sample variable names for the arguments that are needed. We can then use these sample variable names to infer what is needed. 
for example, when we press control space inside the parentheses for the point that we are constructing, it shows that we need an x and y value. Well, that seems clear. We need to supply the x and y coordinates of our point. You can also find out what information the constructor function needs by clicking on the class name and then hovering over it, which brings up pop-up help that appears, like this. To construct a particular point, we need particular x and y values. For example, we might want to point at 250, 100, so we replace the x with 250 and the y with 100, like this. Or we might want another point at, say, 100, 300, like this. You have now learned one of the three key ideas of objects. Namely, each object has a type, which is the class to which it belongs. The objects that we have created so far are instances of the point class, as defined in the Rose Graphics module. In general, the notation for constructing an object is to put the module name, followed by a dot, followed by the name for the type, that is class, of thing we want to construct, followed by parentheses, with whatever information inside the parentheses the constructor function needs to initialize the object being constructed. Let's test your understanding. Suppose you want to construct a simple turtle, as defined in the Rose Graphics module. What should I type to do so? Pause the video now and decide, then unpause. I hope that you decided that first I should type rg.simpleTurtle parenthesis parenthesis. Note that I simply pressed the Enter key to let Eclipse type the name of the class for me after I typed a few letters of it. You should do that too, so that you avoid misspelling names and so that you don't have to memorize the exact form of the spelling. Here is another test of your understanding. What do I do to figure out what information goes inside the parentheses, that is, what arguments the constructor function for a simple turtle needs? Pause the video now and decide, then unpause. I hope that you decided that I can either hover over the name Simple Turtle and look at the help that pops up, or I can press Control Space inside the parentheses. When I do so, I see that the constructor function wants the shape of the Simple Turtle. The equal sign in what pops up here means that this argument is optional. I can omit it, and it receives the cl default value, Classic. So I can construct a simple turtle like this, rg.simpleTurtle parenthesis parenthesis, with nothing in the parentheses. Or I could look at the pop-up help to see what possibilities there are for the optional shape argument, like this. Aha! I can have a square as the shape if I want, by putting quote square quote as the argument, like this. Again, the first of the three key ideas for object is that you construct an instance of an object by putting the name of the type, that is class of the object, followed by parentheses with any necessary information inside them. The second of the three key ideas for objects is that for any given class, there can be many instances of that class, and each instance has data associated with it, stored in what is called its instance variables. All instances have the same names for their data, for example, all points have an X and Y associated with them, but the actual values for those names will vary from one instance to another. Let's continue our point example to investigate this idea in Python. To do things with these points, we will want to give them names using the assignment operator, like this. Recall that this notation means that the name on the left-hand side of the equal sign refers to the object on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So now our point at 250, 100 is called point 1, and the point at 100, 300 is called point 2. Once an object is constructed, we can change the data that the object has. For example, suppose we want to change our point 1 to be at 500, 400. To do this, we type the name of the object, point 1, then a dot, then the name of the object's instance variable that we want to change. In this case, it's x and y coordinates. Then, just as for any other variable assignment, we write the equal sign and write a new value after the equal sign. To do this, we need to know the names of the instance variables. Again, the dot trick comes to our rescue. 
we type the name of the variable, then the dot, then we pause and Eclipse shows us the names of all the things associated with the object. The names come in two flavors. The first is the instance variables. They are shown with little blue circles beside them. So here we see that a point has quite a few instance variables, for example, fill color and outline color. Scrolling further down, we come upon the names of the instance variables we want, namely x and y. So to change point 1 to be at 500 comma 400, we would write point 1 dot x equal 500, point 1 dot y equal 400. Again, what we are doing is to write the name of the object that we want to change, followed by a dot, followed by the name of the instance variable we want to change, in this case x. Then just like we would do with any other variable assignment, we write an equal sign followed by the new value like the number 400. So from this point forward, point 1 has 500 as the value of its instance variable called x, and 400 is the value of its instance variable called y. Just as we can set instance variables, we can also get them. For example, maybe we want to print the current value of point 1's x variable. The syntax, that is notation, for doing so is the same as for setting it. We write the object's name, then the dot, then the name of the instance variable that we are interested in. So for example, here we write print point1.x. So this statement would print 500 in our example. We can, we can combine getting an instance variable and setting it in the same assignment statement. For example, suppose that we want to set the x coordinate of point 1 to double what it was. To do so, we set the point's x coordinate as before. But this time, instead of writing a number like 500, we write the point's old x coordinate, which we get with point1.x. Then we multiply that by 2 to get the doubled value as desired. On the right side of the equal sign, we are getting the point's x coordinate. On the left side of the equal sign, we are setting the point's x coordinate. So check your understanding. What will get printed by the following code? Pause the video and decide, then unpause to see. I hope you see that the print for point 3 yields 170 and the print for point 4 yields 50 and 20 respectively. Summarizing what you have seen so far, first, every object belongs to a class. We say that the object is an instance of the class. You construct an instance of a class by putting the name of the class followed by parentheses with any necessary information inside them. Second. For any given class, there can be many instances of that class, and each instance has data associated with it, stored in what is called instance variables. All instances have the same names for their data, for example, all points have an x and y associated with them, but the actual values for those names will vary from one instance to another. We reference a point's instance variable by writing the name of the point, followed by a dot, followed by the name of the instance variable we can set the value of instance variables as well as get them. The third key concept for using objects is that all instances of a class have the same set of methods that define what the instances can do. Here the word method is just what we call a function when it is applied to an object. To find out what an instance can do, we use the dot trick yet again like this. The methods have an M beside them. Here we see that a point can attach itself to a window or move itself by given amounts, for example. Hovering over the method's name brings pop-up help on how to use that method. For example, here is the pop-up help for the move by method. So after these lines of code where we set point 5 to a point at 1020 and then ask point 5 to move by 37, what do you think that the print statement produces when we print point 5's x and y? I hope that you see that it would print 13 for point 1's x and 27 for point 1's y. Note the parentheses after the name of the method, here after move by. You must have those parentheses, even if there is nothing required inside them. 
So check your understanding. What will get printed by the following code? Pause the video and decide, then unpause to see. Here's the code being run. The last two lines there are from these last two prints. I hope you see that the first move by, which is applied to point 6, would cause the first print to print that 45 and 26. The 45 coming from 40, point 6's original value, plus the 5 that it's moved, and then the 26 coming from 20's, from point 6's original y value, plus the 6 by which that y is moved. The second move by combines ideas that we have seen. It first references point 6's x, which is now 45, and it changes point 7's x to what it was, 10, plus that 45 from uh, its move by, to get a total of 55. It also changes point 7's y from the 15 that it was to that plus 100 via the move by to become 115. To summarize all that you learned in this video, first, every object belongs to a class. We say that the object is an instance of the class. You construct an instance of the class by putting the name of the class followed by parentheses with any necessary information inside them. Second, for any given class, there can be many instances of that class. And each instance has data associated with it, stored in what is called instance variables. All instances have the same names for their data. For example, all points have an x and y associated with them, but the actual values for those names will vary from one instance to another. We reference a point's instance variable by writing the name of the point, followed by a dot, followed by the name of the instance variable. We can set the value of instance variables as well as get them. Third, all instances of a class have the same set of methods that define what the instances can do. You access those methods with the same notation that you access instance variables, namely the name of the object, a dot, the name of the method, and now for methods, parentheses with whatever information the method needs inside them. The dot trick is the technique you can use to discover what classes are available in Rose Graphics and how to use instances of those classes. You'll do that in Session 2. Here's a preview of what you'll experience in Session 2. Don't try to memorize any of this. Just use it as a sample of what you'll be doing. You'll see in class from an example that you need to make a rose window. So you'll do something like this. And you'll then maybe go down and click on rows window and perhaps it will indicate that you don't need any arguments for it. You'll then want to uh, make your circle, that's what we're trying to do here. To make a circle you would look at RG circle and you would see that to construct that you need a center and a radius and that the center is to be an RG point. So let's do that. Let's make a center. I'll make a variable for it. P, I'll call it. RG point at, say, 100, 150. And then a radius. I'll set that to, say, 30. And then I can make my circle. I'll just call it circle with a little c. We reserve capital letters for our classes. So all your variables should begin with a lowercase letter. And it's a circle at P and R. The example will show you that in order to make a circle show up, you have to attach it to the window, which I've called window here. And in order to make the window show its stuff, you have to render the window. And finally, to make the window not go away, you need to tell it to close on mouse click. So you can see as I type the dot trick with all these, I could quickly uh, press enter and it show me what's up. So when we then run the program, we see our circle show up. Again, during the session two, you'll uh, see examples of all that.